All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon for the second day of the University Express fall semester. My name is Katie Earle. I'm the coordinator of this program, and I work for the Erie County Department of Senior Services. We're joined here today with recycling coordinator Amy Alduino, solid waste recycling specialist Gary Carroll, both from our county's environment and the planning department, and we have Phil Bowe, who's the director of sales for Sun King. So before we jump into their presentation, a couple things I want to let you know about. First thing is the session is being recorded and we'll try to post it online at a later date. Second thing is that I'm sure you've noticed by now is that you've joined without a video of yourself showing and you're muted. You haven't done anything wrong. That's just the settings for this program. So don't worry about that. You also might think that you're the only one here with us today, but promise you there are other people. It's only the four of us who can see the complete list of participants. So we'll be communicating with you through our Q&A panel. So when some of you joined today, that probably popped right up on the right side of your screen. You may just have to click that little carrot to expand it, but you should see your text box. Make sure you're sending your questions to me, really any of us, but to me so I can be sure that they're answered. And if you don't see that panel, if you wiggle your mouse around or poke or touch your screen, it should pop up at the bottom right hand side of your screen. It'll look like a square with a question mark in it. And if it's not there, click the three dots in one of those circles and then you'll find it. So hope you ask your questions and give us your comments today. We'll also be putting out a couple polls, so those will pop right up on your screen and you can send us your answers. So I'd like to thank the sponsors of our program, which is my Department of Senior Services, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Western New York, Excelsior Orthopedics, because they help make this program possible. And as always, I have to let you know that Senior Services is here for you. If you have questions about services or programs for yourself or a loved one, please don't hesitate to contact us. We're at 858-8526. Without further ado, I will turn it over to the experts here. Thank you all for your time today. Thank you, Katie. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, so we are going to be focusing a little bit today about the recycling of electronic waste. It's an issue that uh, has become more and more problematic. Uh, so we wanted to go into some details as to why that is and what happens when we recycle these materials. Uh, but at the, at the end, too, we're happy to answer any general recycling questions that, that you have. But we think you'll be really interested in this, uh, in this program. And as uh, Katie mentioned, there will be three of us speaking today. Uh, Amy is our recycling coordinator, and Phil from uh, Sun King, uh, who really is one of the few uh, e-waste recyclers in our area, and and to my knowledge, the only one that's really uh, holding these large events that that is handling a lot of people. And then there's me. Um, I'm a recycling specialist. So there you go. All right, so I wanted to mention, I mean, uh, the Erie County Department of Environment and Planning, uh, we, there's a lot of aspects on things we do, and we certainly deal a lot with waste reduction and recycling, but we also deal with a lot of different types of waste um, beyond, you know, maybe beyond the curb, you know, so not just what gets picked up in your household, but what do we do with all these other uh, materials? For instance, um, hazardous waste. Uh, we have a few ways that we're dealing, dealing with that. We have um, some collection programs throughout the year. We just had one that last weekend in Martin Luther King Jr. Park. Uh, and we also have a regular program uh, where you can sign up and take your household hazardous waste um, almost every day of the week to a facility in Tonawanda. You do that uh, through our website. And there's lots of other, I mean, there's uh, the e-waste that we'll be focusing on today, and you can see up here on the, if you can see the screen, um, you know, uh, prescription drugs, again, not something you should be throwing out. There's a lot of resources, uh, more than ever before, lots of places where you can take your prescription drugs for proper disposal. Soon it will be many pharmacies as well. That's a program that New York State is implementing, so it'll be even easier to do that. Um, we're always letting people know that um, latex paint can be dried out and thrown out. It, you know, you don't have to do anything special with it. The key there is kitty litter. You can put uh, put some kitty litter into a can, and that's going to 
going to absorb the, the liquid. Uh, if you have a lot of paint that you're trying to get rid of, the other option is to take a box, double or triple line it with the plastic bags, put the kitty litter in that, and pour your paint off into that. The key is how in disposing latex paint that it be dry when, when it goes into the garbage so that, so that the cans don't burst and that paint doesn't get all over the streets. So we have lots of different ways that we deal with uh, to, you know, none of this should go in your regular garbage. So um, I will say uh, at our website, and that's www.erie.gov slash recycling, we have resources for all this stuff. And then the other number or the other thing to remember is a phone number and that uh, and those this will be up at the end, but I'll mention it again. It's our hazardous waste information line and that's eight five eight six eight zero zero. So all these things, you know, that not the e-waste, but all these other uh, wastes that I mentioned, we, we certainly have options and we can help you figure out what the best thing to do with it. So talking about e-waste, I mean, electronic waste, we have, you know, more and more of it, and Amy's going to go into a few more details there. It's sort of mind-blowing how much uh, of this, these materials that we've got, but there's just a list up there, and I will read it for those of you that maybe are calling in. Um, computers, televisions, VCRs, stereos, copiers, printers, phones, fax machines, game consoles, those are all things um, and Sunkin will, will give you some more information there as well. Um, over the past 20 years, I mean, the, the amount of this material has just increased dramatically. Uh, and it's really become a problem as we should not be throwing these materials away. Um, and there's two reasons for that. Um, number one, there's a law that says you can't throw this stuff in your garbage, so that makes it you know, pretty easy to say we shouldn't. But really, there's there's two reasons. First of all, there's hazardous materials in all these in all these electronics. Um, you know, mercury, cadmium. You know, all these heavy metals that you know should not be going into the landfill or a waste to energy facility. And you know, because then it's being burned and going up into the air. Um, uh, but the other reason, maybe even more important, is that m these materials are all recoverable and reusable. And that's really a bottom line about uh, proper disposal is that um, companies like Sun King are able to collect these materials and get all this stuff. And, and then it gets reused and, you know, it's not wasted. Uh, there is uh, significant damage to the environment uh, to have to dig for some of these things. So if the more that we can recover through electronic recycling, the better. So again, um, better, you know, better for the planet, uh, better for our municipalities. You know, number one, it's illegal to dump this stuff in the garbage, but it also becomes costly. Municipalities pay for these items um, by weight. So the more you know, we can help our municipalities and help that bottom line, and to get this stuff properly recycled. So that's the the whys and the why nots. And then we're going to I'm going to turn it over to Amy to talk about okay. the wares or the hows or something. Exactly. Well, first of all, what we'd like to do is we'd like to do a poll. And the first question in the poll is. Do you have any old electronics you'd like to get rid of? And if so, how many? And I don't know about you, but for me, the answer is yes. And I think it's 10 plus because we have old phones and old computers and old game consoles and old radios and all of those sorts of things. So I'd like you to um, answer this poll and then uh, we'll continue on with this talk. Okay. So most of you do. And uh, you have a lot fewer things than me, which is good. 
Well, so how do we get rid of them? We can't put them in the garbage, you just heard. Well, in New York State, we have a law um, where the producers, the manufacturers of electric equip, electrical equipment and electronics have a responsibility to um, manage its end of life. And this law, which was, uh, I think it started in 2011, is intended to relieve the burden on for communities and um, consumers to have to manage hazardous e-waste and to provide free and convenient recycling of electronics throughout New York State. So manufacturers are supposed to pay for a collection program proportional to your sales. The program is supposed to be free for consumers. The program is actually in the law not required to be particularly convenient. And there are pretty strict eligibility standards. So what happened over about the um, almost 10 years of life is that, next slide, yeah, is that the law really doesn't work very much right now because there's too many electronics. Americans discarded almost 400 million consumer electronics every year since 2010. In New York State, we um, recycle about 150 million pounds of electronics a year, but um, the requirements for the manufacturers have not kept pace with the amount of um, electronics that everybody's been buying or that we have in our homes already that we need to get rid of. So there's a mismatch there. Um, the manufacturers have read the law very narrowly and there's things that they are refusing to accept. And then um, they're also not making it convenient. The law didn't explicitly say that it had to, the program had to be convenient to people so that there are not requirements. I mean, you can mail a TV back to almost anybody, but where are you gonna find a box? How are you gonna mail it? Isn't that expensive? That's not free. So all of those things have uh, happened and um, we are trying to fix this. And um, so there's some legislation in front of the, um, the state legislature to make some changes to the law so that it will be more convenient and um, less costly for our municipalities. Because next slide. The thing that we found is that when you have a ban and when it's hard for people to get rid of things, there's a certain amount of people that'll just dump this stuff. So um, we see a lot more illegal dumping of, elect of um, electronics and that ends up being unanticipated costs for municipalities because they have to go pick them up and then they have to pay to dispose of them. So that's something that hopefully changes in the law and having a more convenient system will um, get rid of some of this um, dumping that we're seeing right now. Okay, next slide. So I'm gonna turn it over to Phil now. Hi, Hi. I'm from Sun King. Uh, if you're not familiar with us, we've been around for, actually we're celebrating our 20th year this year, a uh, real special 2020. And um, we have, this past year, we recycled over 23 million pounds of electronics. And for anyone calling in, that's the equivalent of 58 blue whales. So we, we like to, you know, compare things. You could just, that's a lot of electronics. We like to say that we recycle anything with a power cord or a circuit board. So that's our, our motto. And we've seen all kinds of electronics. So anything you can imagine. And the items now uh, will have more and more electronic components. I mean, even you'll see couches have you know, electronics and they have the like USB chargers and you buy your, you know, end cable from Ikea and it's got a wireless charger in there. So you'll see all that kind of things. I'm sitting in a room that sometimes we collect a few uh, 
more of the phone electronics and sitting next to me i've got i've got a uh can, we, can you see that as a for anyone on the phone it's an old light bright i remember playing that as a kid so that's an electronic that's a that's a older one for sure but uh you know so so we see anything so that's what we like to say is very easy so if you're looking to recycle something you want to think of anything that has that's that's powered so anything with a power cord or a circuit board anything that's battery operated um that's pretty much anything that we can recycle if you want to go so our our main we have three tenants of recycling um we call it the three r's reuse repair and recycle so the best way to recycle something is through reuse and then if it if it needs repair it can if it can get repaired if there's a, a secondary market or a second life for it we can repair it for reuse and then the last thing you know about for keeping out of the landfill is is straight recycling so here we'll, you'll see a lot of uh inside our our facility we've got a a shredder that that turns uh, consumer electronics into basically like a refining material. We could we could separate plastics from metals um, and and give that a second life into uh, into new commodities, new products. Do you want to go to the next one? Um, so when we repair and refurbish materials, um, we work with residents and we work with businesses. We uh, repair and refurbish a lot of business material. But we have multiple outlets for uh, for a second life for these electronics. One would be we, we do have a, a retail store in the village of Brockport. It's called um, Ecoboos, and we just built a facility in Utica area. Whitesboro is the the town, and um, we're looking at building another retail store in Utica. And uh, we also have partners that own retail stores, so we supply. Our, our retail partners too with uh, refurbished electronics. We sell through Amazon, through eBay, uh, and through Newegg. And we also sell directly to other companies um, wholesale. So instead of maybe like a consumer buying a PC, a company may buy a full tractor trailer's worth of PCs. Um, so we've got a lot of different outlets for all the refurbished electronics. And then if you want to go to the next, the next slide, I wanted to take you through the life of, uh, an old, an old television. So those CRT TVs, the cathode ray tube ones, I think we've all had those, the ones I'm talking about the, with the heavy leaded glass um we will we'll collect those a lot at our collection sites or our collection events and once it comes back to our facility here in brockport new york we actually dismantle the the television and the plastic gets bailed up into bricks and we send it to a partner in canada which actually then reuses that plastic for other materials uh there's a cord which gets harvested for copper uh, there's some copper in the back. There's a copper yoke, and we actually take the bare, the bare CRT tube. We send that to a partner in Ohio, where it goes to a smelter, and they separate the lead from the glass. So the glass can go to making products. It goes into a lot of building products like concrete. Um, it can also go into. You'll see it in uh, reflective road gratings and even paint, because paint will have glass in it. Um, and then the lead goes to things like uh, car batteries. So that's uh, that's the whole life of a of a recycled CRT. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, we've got a video of one of our collection events that we held this year in Oswego. So we wanted to show that this was on Spectrum News in Syracuse. Right. Hopefully, I can do this. But I'm Kate Callaway in Oswego, where hundreds of people are throwing out items it? like these at the first electronic recycling event since the start of the pandemic. If you want to just follow that truck up there, it'll be so loaded, okay? Thank you. Have a great day. Shannon Bove is an event greeter. Things are running smoothly. This being our first time here.
kind of didn't know what to expect, um, what to expect in Oswego and how many people. So it's working out fantastic right now. Did you pre-register? Because of COVID, Sun King had to come up with a different way to manage people and take their stuff in a timely manner. Instead of just showing up and possibly waiting hours in line, the folks dropping off their old junk had an option to pre-register. Them being able to go online, sign up for an appointment, and come at their designated time definitely has um, helped control the, the traffic for sure. She'll wave along about 800 people that have already pre-registered. Everybody wins. People can drop their electronics for free while helping the environment. People need to recycle their electronics so that they don't end up in the dump um, in the wrong places. Um, us being able to properly take in the electronics and recycle them the right way, you know, it absolutely helps the environment. Everyone seems like they're in a good mood. Yeah, everybody's doing super friendly and a good mood. Now it's time to sort, and that's where Thomas comes in. Sometimes you need a little teamwork with the heavier stuff. This is just the second event for the 16-year-old. It's tough work, but fun finding the unusual stuff guitar heroes. that people pile up in their vehicles. we got a, quite a few pianos, a lot of guitars, a lot of musical equipment in general. Papa says he's having fun. The coffee? The people he's working with are friendly, and so are the ones coming through the line. Those aren't the only reasons he's giving his time on this Saturday morning. For the environment, I mean, the world needs us. The environment needs us. Let's do what we can to help Helping the world one device at a time. In a we go, King Calloway, Spectrum News. All right, so let me do this. All right. <clears throat> so if we go to the next slide. I'm working on it. It's a fast video. I spent it. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh, no. There that, um, we go. That event greeter was is actually my wife, and she might be, she doesn't even work for Sun King. I just make her come on Saturdays to help me, and she might be a better spokesperson than me. But what can you do? So, so this page, if, if you were interested in attending an event, you would go to sunking.com. It'll ask you if you're a resident or business. If you click on a resident, there's a whole events page. You probably also, if it's in your area, you'll probably get a postcard or a mailer from your elected official. Um, so you just click on one of those uh, dates that you want. So if you want to go to Niagara Falls, you click on it. We actually have pre-registration. That's the first time we've done pre-registration this year because uh, it's it's uh, it's difficult to gauge how many people are going to attend. Uh, these events can be a rather large undertaking where we can collect up to almost 400,000 uh, pounds per event, which would be the equivalent of us bringing 20 tractor trailers to the event. So we have to make sure we have enough employees, enough pallets, enough boxes, enough shrink wrap, enough forklifts, enough everything so we switched to this pre-registration which helps us uh, immensely so we can continue to keep these as uh, free and convenient as possible i think we have a, a poll up here too just wanted to see if anyone on here has attended one of our electronics events a couple all right well that's great so, and so yeah. I, I, oh, can, I can mention, I mean, uh, I mean, as I said before, I mean, really, Sun King is the only uh, company that's been holding these events, so we really do appreciate that. Uh, at the county, we get lots of phone calls about how to properly dispose of your e-waste, and fortunately, we've been able to you know, provide this information. But similarly, our hazardous waste collections, we also had so many people coming that we had to implement a reservation event. And it just works so much better because, you know, you, you, you as you said, you know what to expect. You, you've got people coming at a certain time. So it's all, you know, the wait, there's still a wait, but it's not the way we, we had times when people were waiting two and three hours. And yeah. no one, no one's happy about that. But um, 
So at least, I, you know, I, I commend you for, for putting this in place. But again, and I know you have a lot of supporters uh, that help you do this. I mean, we have some elected officials that have helped, but so, but without dunking, the, this stuff would, this would not be happening. And I can mention there are a few municipalities that are accepting e-waste, um, but not a whole lot. So, I mean, this really is a, a great service to provide. Thanks. Yeah. I think that's all I have on, on the events. <clears throat> All right, so um, we're gonna move, I think, into the questions. And so again, up on the screen, I'll just go over this again. Um, for questions, uh, any kind of questions related to recycling, either the e-waste that we've been talking about or any of the other materials, it's 858-6800, that's our hazardous, that's our information line. Uh, and then you can also go online and that's www.erie gov slash recycling and again that's uh, there there is even a page or there is even a, a link to uh, each municipal page for for their recycling information so if you're not sure uh, what your municipality is doing uh, we we have compiled those pages together so. and then the other thing on the screen is everyone's email address and phone numbers so I'm sure, Katie, if anyone called you, you could provide that information. You're muted, Katie. You're muted. <laughs> Thanks. I'm on the computer. I'm on my phone. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, yes. Well, thank you very much for the information. And yes, if anyone wants to reach out to them directly, contact me, and I'm happy to pass that along, especially for folks who have called in. Um, if you want to take a moment and type in your question or comments in that Q&A panel, we'll be happy to relay that information along. But while you folks are thinking, um, Gary, Amy, and Phil, if you can chime in too, I'm just wondering if you have any frequently asked questions about like general recycling and, and what can and cannot go in your regular bin, anything like that you'd like to share? Sure. Um, so, uh, and again, as, as I think we made abundantly clear, you know, you should not put any of your e-waste into your recycling tote. Um, that should either be, you know, uh, taken care of through your municipality. There are other places, um, you know, area, Goodwills and Salvation Army, some of, some of them accept some e-waste. I would say almost none of them take television. So that's, you know, we always suggest uh, give a call first before you, you know, schlep anything, especially a, like a big television or something. Um, and there are a number of places that are very happy to take your TV and charge you. So we also have that information available. So if you can't wait for a collection event, there are some options. We also, uh, on our website too, there's a, a zip code locator, a drop-off locator. So you can oh. go on our website, put in your zip code and, and hopefully, you know, hopefully that will help. Uh, unfortunately, if it is a big TV, there are currently not too many choices, but uh, it's something in the future we're definitely working on. Well, and hopefully, well, thank you. Hopefully, the law, you know, the update of the law that Amy mentioned will also help to deal with some of these issues. Um, part of the problem right now, you know, as as was noted, is sort of created by the law. Um, so there, there are fixes trying to be put in place. Um, obviously, with um, our current pandemic and everything, that has slowed a lot of um, legislation down and things like that for this year. But we do anticipate that. And and I'll just say again, um, their website, terrific website, it's Sunking is S U N N K I N G dot com. You can also get, we have a link right to their website from our website, erie.gov slash recycling. So if, if you can't remember Sun King, then just come to erie.gov slash recycling. Um, Phil, we do have a question for you. Uh, it's a comment and a question. Thank you, Sun King, for the service. So do you recycle any type of old TV? Yes, yeah, any type of old TV. 
it's uh, the one thing you want to be careful. So projection television, CRTs, CRT monitors, flat screens, whether they're plasma, LCD, LED, doesn't matter. The one thing that we want to be careful with is that events, we cannot accept the ones, the CRTs with broken glass because of the lead. It's hazardous. Uh, it's hazardous waste at that point. But regular TVs that uh, are intact, they're any, any kind. And what do you tell people with a broken television? Um, I, yeah, so with a broken television, the first thing I always ask is, how is it broken? Because if it's a, a cracked screen, if it's an LCD or an LED or plasma, that's fine. But if it's the one with the leaded glass, the CRT, then uh, we might make arrangements. We can make special arrangements, arrangements to get it here to Brockport. Um, because it has to be treated as hazardous waste. There's very few. There's um, sometimes we'll deal with uh, a you know place in Erie County the Environmental Service Group, which is very helpful as far with hazardous waste too, like that. So um, there, there's not too many options, but you you should uh, you could call us and we could figure out based on your location the best way to get rid of it. Shouldn't be too many ones with broken glass out there because. Are practically indestructible. I mean, especially compared to the to the the new TVs now, where you can look at them and they'll just crack. <laughs> yeah, we were mentioning that the other day that, um, you know, what I can remember buying a TV and you had it for twenty five or thirty years, and that just certainly most electronics that just is not the case anymore. Things that just are not lasting, which is another reason why this elevation of e-waste uh, is occurring, because there's there's more of it, or somebody wants the latest, you know, they want the latest bells and whistles they can get, so that makes a big difference. Yeah. So, Phil, um, can I bring oh. um, old remotes? I think I have a drawer of old remotes. Oh, absolutely. I have a circuit board and a teeny tiny little circuit board, but yeah. Um, next question we have is also both a comment. Thank you. I had no idea how many different electronics can be recycled and shouldn't be thrown out. How do you dispose of batteries? Mm, batteries. Those are a tough one. So, uh, events, we can take any kind of battery that's rechargeable. There is a secondary market. There are natural resources inside those batteries which can be recovered. Now, we at events we cannot take non-rechargeable batteries. So double A's, triple A's, C's, D's, you know, the alkaline batteries, those are the ones I'm talking about, or the uh the button cell batteries, the lithium mercury mm -hmm. ones, those are the only kinds that we cannot take um, from events because while they can be recycled, uh, right now the cost is just so high for us that we can't it, we, we just we can't accept them. Um, but we uh, we do get those as a byproduct of materials, and we send them out to a special battery vendor to get recycled. So uh, you can always check with a, a special battery, uh, like a battery store for your types of like watch batteries, hearing aid batteries, and your AA and AAA. And then I don't know if Erie County has something special with um, the alkaline batteries. Oh boy, I wish we did. Um, so far, there is there is no place to really recycle alkaline batteries in Erie County. Um, what I always suggest to people is to switch to rechargeables because there is there is uh, programs that are very much in place to uh, harvest the materials uh, from once your rechargeable battery is not working anymore. Um, and besides Sun King, any, any store that sells a rechargeable battery is responsible to take them back. So if you, and that would include like, you know, the battery that goes in your drill and things like that. I mean, so not just you know the triple A's and double A's, but um, so if you bought a rechargeable drill at Home Depot, you can take that battery back to Home Depot. You know when you go to buy your next battery, 
Um, but but any place that sells them is required to take them back by New York State law. Um, so that's my best answer for alkaline batteries. Don't, you know, as much as possible, don't use them. Get some nice rechargeable batteries. That's really good advice. Thank you all. Um, now, what about fluorescent lights? What do we do with those? Phil, I mean, I'm happy to answer that. Or um, yeah, I, I'll I, I can start. We so again, that's one thing at the the collection events that we don't accept because of the, the high cost. We do uh, get some as a byproduct from some of our businesses we deal with. And we actually ship them to a, a, a partner of ours that specializes in recycling lamps. Um, and then also, depending on the size of the lamp, too, as uh, Gary mentioned before, too, sometimes you can drop off right in front of Lowe's or Home Depot. They have uh, some bins out in front for some of the smaller ones, like the spiral um, lamps. Right. Oh, thank you finish, Gary. So yeah, so Lowe's and Home Depot will take the compact fluorescent. So that's one thing. Uh, and then there are, there's a pro probably about a half a dozen places locally that will accept your fluorescent bulbs. It's usually a charge like five cents a foot, something in that, that range. Um, again, at erie.gov slash recycling, we have a listing uh, or give us a call at 858-6800 and I can uh, tell you that over the phone. Uh, where, where the places are, like I said, there's a, there's a few places that take them. Um, they're, as, as Phil mentioned, they're, they're difficult because, you know, they, they break very easily and they have, um, you know, the hazardous material inside. So that's really where the cost comes in, the handling and then properly recycling them. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, we're going to go quickly back to batteries and then on to plastics. Uh, one person said they heard value stores recycle batteries, so that may be good to know. And then a question, is it illegal to dispose of those alkaline batteries in the trash? No, no. Um, no, it's definitely not illegal. Um, there is an alkaline battery really doesn't have anything toxic in it. It's just that there are recoverable materials, there are recoverable metals, which it's a shame that we're throwing them out, but it's, you know, it's definitely not legal. As a matter of fact, probably the worst thing you can do is to save them all up because then there, there would be some potential. You know how old batteries start to sort of disintegrate. So the best thing if you've got them, uh, toss them out, you know, just toss them out as they, as they go bad. And if you do have a lot of batteries laying around ready to go to some type of event or store, um, like those, the ones you have for a power drill, it would be prudent to just put some masking tape on mm -hmm. the terminals of the, of those, because if they touch, there is a small chance of a spark of creating a fire pretty small, but it's something that, uh, you know, we take precautions with at our, at our house. When we separate them out with the nickel or the, the, the nickel cadmium, which is, you'll see a lot in the power drills or power tools, and then the uh, nickel metal hydride, uh, they, over a certain voltage, probably should uh, take the precautions just taping off the terminals. Yeah, very good point. Very, very good point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Um, now we have a question about plastics. Can you clarify exactly what types of plastic can be recycled? For example, containers. So, as Phil mentioned, I mean they have a they have a an outlet for the type of plastic they're getting from electronics. Whereas in the curbside recycling, they're uh, they're finding it to be pretty limited for recycling plastics. Um, my best answer there is indeed to go to uh, the, you know, to find out exactly what your municipality is taking. Um, every municipality in Erie County, there are 44 municipalities. They all handle their garbage and recycling on their own, which means there's a, Either they're collecting it or they're contracting out with uh, with companies to collect these materials, both garbage and recycling. 
And so they're the ones, it's the, it's the companies collecting these materials, they're the ones that are saying what they can and can't recycle. Um, I can tell you that what we are hearing more and more is that um, there's not a whole lot of plastics that are being recycled very well. Um, when, uh, when we had this uh, talk a couple of months ago, we had uh, our guest was waste management, and they really mentioned um, bottles and cans as to be the, one of the best things to recycle. Um, what we used to say, and I think we might be coming back to this, is narrow neck, screw on top. So that means, you know, your yogurt container is really not very recyclable. Um, but again, I, I suggest strongly that you look at the menu of what is accepted in your community because if they're saying, you know, whatever they're saying they're collecting, that, you know, they should be doing that, you know, just to, just to give you a sense of the problem here is that um, all these materials, if most, most of our municipalities are putting everything into one large tote. Um, and that's a good thing because, you know, it, from the days when we had those small blue containers and people would say to me, well, I, I have more recycling that will fit and now we have these larger containers. But the problem is, is that um, a lot of things get mixed together. People are putting the wrong materials in and that is hugely problematic. But all this mixing together, especially all these new plastics, these very thin plastics, um, let's say the plastic that your strawberries might come in. Um, that is such a thin plastic that when it goes through uh, the facility where, this, where the materials are being sorted, it flattens out and it actually gets stuck in other things that might get stuck in with the paper or might get stuck in with some other materials. And that's what, why this is becoming problematic. Um, so again, check with your municipality, check to see what exactly is and isn't taken, uh, and don't put in stuff that can't be recycled. Because even though we want this stuff to be recycled, by adding these materials to the bin, uh, you're actually creating more problems and maybe making more materials not recycled because they're contaminated. Amy, if you, I don't know if you have anything to add to that, you are certainly welcome to. It's, um, I think it's gotten really confusing for everybody. There's a lot more plastics. And if you look on the bottom of the plastics, most of them indicate they've got this little symbol on it with a number in the middle. And it kind of looks exactly like a recycling symbol, but it's not. It's actually a plastic content symbol made to look like a recycling symbol so that you think it's recyclable. Most of the new plastics are not recyclable for two reasons. They're too complicated. Um, and then the other thing is that there's not enough of them to be viable to put together a process. You need to have a lot of the same kind of plastic. So you have to have a lot of milk jugs or a lot of water bottles in order of the same type of plastic in order to get a bale together and have it in a way that somebody would want to use it. And um, so that's what that's what we're seeing is the more the thinner stuff is just not being recycled. Uh, and by too complicated, Amy means like some of these some of these plastics maybe have two or three plastics in them. You know this container that's holding your light bulb or something, and you know it. It doesn't melt down properly. That's why um, one of the solutions is as we're buying things, you know, to not buy. You know, well, I want this not in not in a package. And I realize that's not always possible, but you can take a look and see what's offered and buy the thing that has the least packaging. That's probably the best advice to reduce our plastic use. So one question, and look at that, I could go on and on. <laughs> we appreciate the knowledge you have, though, because this, you're right, this is so complicated, and we all just want to make sure we're doing the right thing for the environment. So the last question I'm seeing here is how, did, how to dispose of small propane containers like a camper size? 
Okay, well, that is one of the items that we take in our household hazardous waste program. Uh, and probably the most convenient, we have uh, this new voucher program that, again, you can get to either by calling us on our hotline, 858-6800, or go to erie.gov slash recycling. And uh, you can bring up to 50 pounds of household hazardous waste to a facility in, the, in Tonawanda. And that's one of them that we have a whole list of materials you accept, but that's one of them because they are not easy to get rid of, those one-pounders. Uh, so that's my best advice. Uh, is to go through our hazardous waste collection program. Okay, thank you, Gary. Well, I'm just gonna give it a couple more seconds to see if anybody else has a question. Um, otherwise, just really appreciative of your time, you giving us your knowledge, everybody who spent the afternoon here with us learning about recycling. Again, we are recording this, so I'll post it if there's anything you wanna go back and check out and the information is there to contact them. So just actually seeing a lot of thank yous, very good information. So with that, I'm gonna stop recording.